So there you go, some very interesting uh, community names there in terms of what's going on there. But we're focusing on that in context of the security architecture in the country and ask, what exactly is going on? We're going to Abuja for that. Mark Bay. Well, thank you, Chamberlain. I have with me now retired Major General Garba Wahab, who was a former Director of Operations Army Headquarters, GOC 1 Division, and Chief of Army Administration. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you very much, Madam. Well, you have heard that report, and uh, I'm sure you must have been keeping tabs on what has been going on along the waterways in, uh, in Lagos for, well, more specifically, we know that you know, usually uh, security personnel have been stationed on many of the waterways in the Niger Delta creeks. But then we have this incident happening in this community in Lagos, and we understand that two soldiers, in fact, we understand a captain died, and also about four policemen. From your reading, what precisely do you think went wrong? Well, uh, in military parlance, there are processes and procedures by which you conduct your operation. Somewhere along the line, uh, I keep on saying one thing. Maybe the, the officer and his men became emotional. They were too, too high and they went in without doing proper analysis of what they are going to face. You don't just bump into a place, even if somebody has direct information, credible information, credible intelligence for you. You have to assess the information you have and then plan your operation. You just don't move in. You, you don't do that. The man might have done well, which is part of what people have been clamoring. Let the locals be part of the security watch. Let us be security conscious of what is happening around our area. But when you have your intelligence or information, you need to sit down and plan fully. Mm. So, so that, in reference so to that, I'm sure you're referring to the landlord who was yeah. said to have informed them and yeah. showed the... Uh, take them to the place. The yeah, place the, where the, these guys are. Yeah, where the militants were. You don't, you don't move so, in like that. But wouldn't, wouldn't that affect confidence? Because usually when people give information mm. in some instances, and for a landlord who was willing and mm. daring to go with you to that place and yeah. show you, he mm. wasn't just giving, he wasn't whispering yes. this information. Mm. If the men hadn't followed in the mm. manner that he wanted or in mm. the manner that he thought they would have, mm. don't you think that would have affected confidence? Uh, there are ways by which you can undo that. But uh, let me use a, 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 a normal situation in our homes. You have an issue with somebody and somebody say, come, let me take you to this man's house. And you carry yourself, you go to the house. You don't know what you are going to meet over there. You don't know the number of people that are inside the house. If you are 20 and the family is about 100 and something, they'll beat you to pulp because you are not going to meet somebody who is sleeping. You are, meeting, you are going to meet people who are organized. They have lookouts. Even among the community, there are those who are going to give them information that these people are coming or the military guys are coming. And you're not, you, they are not going there, maybe by, through the bushes. They went by, by vehicle, they went by road. So whatever you do, your coming is known. Your coming, they, these guys are aware. So you need to plan going in. You just don't go in like that. Uh, the young man wanted to do, to do a, a quick job. There are two types of attack we have in the military, the deliberate and the quick. Yes, he wanted to do a quick attack, but in this instance, it will have been a deliberate thing sit down. Yes, the man could take somebody in or take some elements of the guys in to locate the location and then they come back. You now sit down and plan your move. You don't just move in. And that's exactly what I believe was wrong. This community has had yeah. the presence of security men for a while because yeah. they have been facing these attacks. In fact, at some point, uh, the people who had, were leaving the town in numbers, in, yeah. their, in their numbers, because they felt that you know, the place wasn't safe and yeah. they were under constant attack from these militants. Yeah. It was only a joint task force that was able to calm the situation, yeah. and I think they were now permanently stationed there. Yeah. What do you think has given this group of militants the temerity to regroup and then come back and then think they can take on the security agencies headlong. Uh, like I said, you need to look at what is happening generally all over the world. You have a situation where people have been controlling a particular place. If you push them out, you can't continue to sustain a high number of personnel in that place. Over time, you keep on reducing your men gradually. As peace returns, as more people come in, you reduce. Even though you, you still keep elements so that they're there patrolling day and night, you don't want these guys to come in. Because if you patrol only during the day, 
They take over at night. You patrol at night. They take over during the day. You have to be, it has to be 24 hours all, all day long. But you cannot keep 100 men perpetually in that place. You keep on rotating, you keep on reducing as peace returns. And within the community, there are those who are also part of them, but who come in and relate with the ordinary community like any other person. And they know what is actually happening. You don't know them, they know you. And over time, when you are a little bit relaxed, they come back. They will come in in beats, creeping an exertion. They come in gradually. And when they believe that, okay, we've, we've come in fully, then they start their trade. It's not only in Ikorodu. We react to things late in Nigeria. It's, it's rather unfortunate. Arepo, another example, is an area that's been in contention for so long. The military keep on complaining. Look, this, this area comes between Lagos and Ogun State. Let us have something concrete in this area. Let the NPC come and do something about this. Nobody listen. There was a time when people went and broke the pipeline and then they siphoned for it and whatever. So many people died. As of that time, I think something should have been done to stop that. Nothing was done. And the same thing in the Korodu. So what do you think is missing? Would you, would you say that there is a lack of political will? Why we, 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 don't, we don't take things, we don't give uh, serious considerations to a lot of things. We wait until things have gone out of control. I'll give you another example. Uh, look at most of the bus stops you have in, in areas like Abuja. Take, for instance, the uh, federal secretariat. When taxis and all these buses start dropping somebody, uh, people one by one, gradually, people complain. Look, they, it will come to a point where this place will turn to a bus stop. Nobody listens. Then all of a sudden, you are using more strength, more personnel, more resources to drive them on a daily basis. You pack vehicles to make sure people don't park there. Why don't you stop it from the beginning? The same thing in, in, in Arepo, the same thing in, uh, in Ikorodu, because people will copy what is happening elsewhere. This is happening in Niger Delta, and it had extended up to Edo. It, it was moving to, to Undo. Mm. Why didn't you do something to stop it at that point? General, we'll have to, you know, ask who should be doing something. We'll ask that question when we return uh, from this break. Do stay with us.